Okay, in this video, we're gonna look at testing for expected exceptions. So on the screen here, I have our index controller and I have what's a oops handler. And let's update this, call it oops, make that a little more intuitive. So we're mimicking a controller here. And what we wanna do is actually throw a, a specific exception. So we'll say throw new, like so, and it's gonna say that's not found, and I'm gonna go ahead and create a class for that, and we'll just put that into uh, controllers for now. So I'm setting up an exception class. So we'll go ahead and add that. So that, that sets that up. So now this is found. And we'll do this. Uh, make a runtime exception so we don't have to declare it. So now that's gonna be happy. And what we wanna do is set up our test. So we have our index controller test. And we can see that name changed. So this is going to change, because right now if I run this, let's go ahead and run this all together. So again, I'm mimicking a controller action that we have a value not found and in spring, we can go in and do special handling based on a controller throwing exception. And this test, we're gonna set up and make sure that that test is going to return back or that value is going to return back an exception. So I'm just gonna comment out the existing implementation like so. Now what we can do is come in, assert throws, and we wanna say that it's gonna throw the value not found exception dot class. So the way we're setting this up is I'm doing assert throws and I say value not found exception class. And then there's a Lambda that we're gonna pass in. And this is where we're, we're gonna do the controller handler. So I'm just gonna copy that right on up like so. So it, we just wanna make sure that when this method is called, so let's go over and look at the index controller again. And you can see that the method just simply throws a new value not found exception. So we're writing a test so we make sure that we get that exact exception class. So I'll go ahead and run this now. And now you can see that the test is green because we are in fact saying that this method should, and under this test condition, throw that exception. So I'm gonna get rid of this comment out code and just clean that up a little bit. So now when I run everything all together, we can see that the two test methods do run happily together. And in this case, the controller is in fact throwing that exception. If it did not throw that exception, our test would fail. And I can actually demonstrate that for you. So if I just comment this out and run the test again, we'll see that when that exception is not thrown, oh, try this one more time, got a little compiler error. So We'll see when that exception is not thrown, we can see that this does in fact fail. And it tells me that this did not pass. So a nice, nice little feature there. So let's go ahead and uh, revert that change. And get rid of that. And now if I click on this one here, it's just gonna rerun the failed test. So I'll click on that one, just run that one failed test. And now we can see that we are back to pass conditions. So being able to test exceptions and conditions like this is very important as you're going through setting up your test. Definitely something you wanna be doing. A lot of people just test happy path. It's important to test exception conditions where things do not happen as expected and you wanna make sure that you are properly handling that. So very important aspect of uh, JUnit is being able to test for specific exception classes to be thrown.